Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the East Staffordshire series, 38 civil parishes covering an area to the north and west of Burton-upon-Trent. It's a lovely part of the world, so let's go and see some of it. Welcome back to a gloriously sunny East Staffordshire this morning. Yeah, it's not raining. Thank you, uh, thankfully. And uh, I'm glad it's sunny because this is a village I've been waiting to put on the map ever since I saw it on the map and planned to come here. This is a very exciting village for many, 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 many reasons. This is Marchington. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Marchington is a small village in East Staffordshire, lying between the towns of Burton-upon-Trent and Utoxeter. The parish includes several hamlets, the most notable being Marchington Woodlands. The name Marchington is derived from Mercham, meaning a settlement where smallage or wild celery grew by meadowland beside a river. The main village has a small community-run shop, a school, a church and two pubs, as well as loads of historic buildings, including the awesome Marchington Hall. The Nottingham to Crewe railway line runs through the village and there used to be a railway station here which closed in 1958. The nearest railway station now is in Utoxeter. However, there's much more to Marchington Parish than just the main village. For starters, there's Smallwood Manor which covers a vast expanse of land to the west. In the hamlet of Morton to the east, there's a prison, HMP Dovegate, which might explain Marchington's relatively low crime rate. But by far the most interesting place in Marchington Parish, for us at least, lies off the B5017 road towards Draycott in the clay. You'll want to watch this one to the very end. This is Marchington, folks, another lovely Staffordshire village surrounded by gorgeous countryside. Let's go. We begin our mammoth trek around Marchington at Smallwood Manor, which is sited pretty much in the middle of nowhere. To get to this, you have to drive up a long entrance drive off the B5017 at Netherland Green, one of the hamlets Marchington covers. Smallwood Manor was originally built as a country house in the late 1880s for the Hodgson family. For much of its time, though, it's been linked to Denston College. The college opened a preparatory school in 1902, which then moved in 1938 to Smallwood Manor. It lasted here for more than 80 years, until in 2021 it moved to a new site within the main Denston College grounds. Smallwood Manor has since been sold and converted into a care home. Run by Cove Healthcare, who have a network of other care homes within Staffordshire and the West Midlands, it caters for children with mental health issues. Let me tell you, driving from Smallwood Manor out here into Marchington Woodlands is not for the faint of heart. This road here looks like it's a, 
a fairly normal country road, but trust me, yeah, from this it. point backwards, it's anything but, isn't it? Yeah, the reality is it's brown trousers time. <laughs> anyway, it's brought us to Marchington Woodlands Church, so let's go and have a look at this next. Marchington Woodlands is located just to the west of the main Marchington village. Undoubtedly, its biggest and grandest feature is its church. Dedicated to St John, this was opened in 1859 and it was designed by Mark Parsons. It consists of a nave, south porch and a chancel with north and south chapels. It's able to stand out for miles around thanks to it being located on top of a hill and the fact it has a tall brooch spire. There's an adjoining cemetery which contains one Commonwealth war grave and the Lick Gate acts as the village's war memorial. Just down the hill there's the village hall, that's this building here, which according to the stone in its wall was built in 1954. Marchington Woodlands used to have a primary school too, which closed in 1981. Local children now attend the primary school in Marchington Village. So the village hall and the church are separated by this little road here. You can see the church spire in the distance there. This is Hodge Lane and this is like a little crossroads in the centre of Marchington Woodlands. The village hall is just down there where my car is and this is an old school hall and the old Woodlands school is behind that there. So there's quite a lot for quite a small hamlet and that's not all either because behind this hedge in this field there's some earthworks. Now I did a bit of research before I came here and that's how I know these are earthworks but I can't for the life of me remember what they used to be but they're over there in that field. I'll put a caption at the bottom to tell you what that was at this point but like I said at this precise moment in time I can't remember what they are and I probably don't have any phone signal out here because it's the middle of nowhere. It's literally the middle of the beautiful Staffordshire countryside and the phone signal out here will probably be, probably be shocking. Okay, I'm gonna go back up to the church and find the wife and then we'll head into Marchington Village. So this is Marchington Village, not a very big place but one with lots to talk about. We begin on the high street, which as you can see once had a shop or two. Off the high street there's the Marchington Bowls and Tennis Club, one of many sports facilities in the village. We'll see the main sports area later. The village is full of houses that look like this, echoing something of a Tudor past. Just up the road from this house is St Peter's Primary School. This was built in 1964, replacing a mid-1830s school which was damaged by an explosion at RAF Fold. Between 1948 and 1964, children here were taught in an army hut. Opposite that we have the Village Hall. The community hub, this regularly features an active calendar of shows, events and private bookings. The hall has both an alcohol and a music licence. On the wall there's the parish notice board and once again Nicky did the honours. So on the wall here at the Village Hall, there's a rather special tiled mural. Now we're used to seeing these things, but I don't think I've ever seen a Platinum Jubilee one before now, because obviously it was only last year, or rather, well this year as I record this, but of course this is going to be out in 2023, this video, isn't it Nikki? Mm -hmm. These are quite uh, something, aren't they? Yeah, so whether they're made by villagers or children or a combination, who knows, but there's some gorgeous stuff like this Queen's Carriage there, and there's Big Ben and St Edward's Crown and Union Jacks and there's the orb and there's the Queen. Look at that. Wow. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> that one's by Darcy. Yeah, I think these are children, aren't they, that have done these? Yeah. Well, probably mainly. a combination, mainly. as I say. Yeah. But lovely. Absolutely what a lovely, fantastic. Beautiful memorial. Chawner is a well-known local name. 
These are Chawner's almshouses, three double-storey, single-bedroom cottages housed in a historic building built in the 1860s. They were built by Lydia Chawner, wife of a local farmer, Henry. One of their sons, Edward Chawner, was Marchington's Lord of the Manor in the mid-1800s. From one lovely old building to another, here's Marchington Hall, made of brick with a gabled front. It was built in the 17th century by the Edgertons, who owned the manor long before the Chawners did, in 1684 and 1685. The hall would go on to belong to the Talbot family in the late 18th and early 19th centuries, and for a while it was under the ownership of the Vernons, they who owned the estate at nearby Sudbury. Next, we turn down Allen's Lane, which is downhill, and you can tell. Look how the rainwater from earlier in the day was running down the road. Are you getting wet feet, my dear? Yeah, well, I'm managing to dodge them. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, there's a but, lot. You know, they're so sad there's a water shortage, won't they? Oh, there will, yeah. There's a lot of water around here. Obviously, with it being on a hill, it all flows down the hill, and this is how floods happen. But I imagine there's uh, management schemes for that kind of thing around here there usually is hope so because you wouldn't like to see a, a village as pretty as marchington be flooded to be honest with you um but as i said though they'll still say there's a water shortage yeah, they will yeah <laughs> Now for Bag Lane, which is where we find one of the two village pubs. This is the Bull's Head. There used to be a Wesleyan Chapel on Bag Lane too, which opened in 1840 and closed in 1970. Next to the pub is a bus stop, which is served by the number 402 to Utoxeter. We love this bus stop because the thoughtful villagers here have provided cushions so that you can wait for your bus in comfort. Brilliant this! Bag Lane then meets the High Street at its junction with Jack's Lane, which is part of the bus route. Let's head south now towards the Cricket Club. Utoxeter Cricket Club are based here in Marchington. They operate two senior teams that play on Saturdays, and they also play some friendly cricket on a Sunday too. Jack's Lane is otherwise residential. One of the most famous people to have lived here is John Owen, born here in 1827. He was a strong amateur chess master. Okay, so now we're heading down a footpath which will take us across to uh, Marchington's sort of sports area, the playing field, playground, etc. And uh, this is tarmac at the moment, but I, I, I suspect this is going to be a field footpath when I reach the end. So I'll just leave the camera on for a second, just so I can confirm my suspicion. I did say to Nikki to take the alternative footpath, which is a bit further back up Jack's Lane but uh, that one didn't seem to be um, as tarmac as I thought. So Nikki has opted to come with me. Let's see how much of a good decision that turned out to be. And the answer is yes, it's a field footpath. I knew it was gonna be. So we'll walk across there, we go over a stream, over a little bridge, and it takes us into the uh, playing field. Over there. The path crosses this bridge over Marchington Brook, a minor watercourse which flows from the Staffordshire Hills all the way to the River Dove. Once over the brook, you're on the playing field. This is Silver Lane Sports Field, which, amongst other things, features this iron beacon. There's also a huge children's playground, and no, I wasn't about to attempt this adventure trail, not with the amount of mud and slippery leaves around. Nikki, though, had a go at the fitness equipment, more specifically, this elliptical trainer. Keep going, Nikki, you can do it. We all believe in you. The Field is a member of Fields in Trust, the 1925 charity formed by Brigadier General Reginald Kentish and the Duke of York, who would become King George VI. The Field is used by both village football teams, who are based at the Bull's Head. They are Bull's Head Marchington FC and Marchington Keep Fat Club. Okay, next up is the church. We've already seen the church at Marchington Woodlands. Marchington Village has its own church and it's uh, basically just up here. Keep following your nose and it appears on the right. 
and then after we've been to the church we'll turn left and that'll take us back to the high street where we started. This is St Peter's Church which predates the church at Marchington Woodlands by some distance. This was built in 1742 in the Russian Orthodox style. It's a Grade 2 listed building and it features a two-stage tower surmounted by a rare octagonal cupola and a weather vane. The figure in the middle of the memorial above is St George and he's depicted standing over a dragon. It was added after World War I. Church Lane now. After the closure of the post office, this village shop opened in 2010 thanks to a group of villagers determined to keep a shop open in the village. A couple more paces and we're at the Dog and Partridge pub, a Georgian country pub and restaurant offering real ales and great food and drink. And then the road runs back to the high street, once again crossing Marchington Brook, which has become significantly wider at this point. So yeah, I wouldn't like to live in that house seeing as it's right next to the stream. It's a bit of a flood risk. There's one of those measuring sticks in the water, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. Which tells you how high the water comes. It's, uh, it's clearly flooded before at some point. I wouldn't like to live close to it. Uh, so yeah. Now then, Church Lane continues basically up a shallow hill. And then we're turning back left towards the car we parked on the high street. And that's really the end of the main walk but we are not done with this one yet. There are two more things which I need to talk about. And the first one of those is a prison, HMP Dovegate. It's one of many prisons in this part of the country. And so we're gonna head out there next and talk a bit about that. To the east of Marchington is the hamlet of Morton, which is where you'll find yet another prison. This is HMP Dovegate, a Category B men's prison. HMP Dovegate is fairly new. It opened in 2001 as a private prison operated by the Serco Group under a 25-year design, build and manage PFI contract. Dovegate receives Category B convicted prisoners serving four years and over with at least 18 months left to serve, and it can hold over a thousand convicts. There are 860 places in the main building and 200 places in a separate building dubbed a therapeutic prison. The prison also has 130 remand places. There's a staffed visitor centre and it has its own bus stop directly outside the gates with services every two hours to Utoxeter and Burton-on-Trent. Dovegate doesn't appear yet to have held anyone of any major note, but that's likely due to its age. Now, to finish off, we're heading out to something completely different, to a prison at least, but uh, no less interesting. Now, Marchington, as you've seen, is a very varied village when it comes to its history, but perhaps one thing that a lot of people don't know about it is that it used to be the site of a barracks and those barracks buildings still stand. Let's go and have a look at them. This is Marchington Industrial Estate, off the road to Draycott in the Clay. It was when I was researching this area that I spotted the site of Marchington Barracks. They lie just to the south of this estate and the map showed an access path to them from here, but it's now been blocked off. We thought we were defeated, but later in the day, Nicky found another way to get to them, perfectly legally. Here, we're on the perimeter road around them. To give them their official name, this is the Royal Army Ordnance Corps Marchington. It was built in 1957 for the supply and maintenance of weaponry and munitions. It was also a central vehicle depot until the barracks closed in 1970 and the Territorial Army took over. Since the early 1980s, this has lay abandoned. Formed of six identical blocks, the barracks are an urban explorer's dream. They have alarms and cameras, but that doesn't stop people getting in. In fact, a fellow YouTuber from Huddersfield did just that last year. We reckon we found his entry point too, around the perimeter road. 
I've linked an article below where you can read about his explore and watch his video. Here's a few shots from the inside. Whilst these are absolutely fascinating, I have to stress folks that I'm not suggesting doing this yourself. The barracks are private property, and if you want to look around them, you do so at your own risk. I firmly suggest staying on the perimeter road. It seems that the entry point from the industrial estate has been blocked off to purposely prevent urban explorers entering via that method. However, the way we used is a public footpath, and the perimeter road seems to be a good place for walking your dog, as we saw one man here doing just that. They're fantastic buildings, and I was really excited to be stood right outside them. So we thought earlier that we were defeated with this and we wouldn't get up close to these buildings. And that was before Nikki decided to look on her phone and see if there was a, another way to access where we are now. Because I only looked at one entrance and that was from the industrial estate, which is over in that direction. But uh, Nikki in her infinite wisdom found another way, completely legal because um, there's a, yeah, public, a public, footpath. public footpath which runs to this perimeter road that we're standing on, so we are entitled to be here, which is fantastic. Of course, there's a massive perimeter fence with barbed wire and huge signs saying trespassers will be prosecuted and all that kind of stuff. CCTV and alarms and you name it, it's got it. But it kind of needs it, doesn't it, Nikki? Yeah, I mean, these buildings, even though these aren't terribly old, they're still required to be really protected because they are part of her part of our heritage. They are. And this one particularly, it's seen a lot of vandalism, a lot of graffiti, and there's even been evidence of fires. So, you know, to keep people out of it is going to be, you know, far better. But aren't they fantastic buildings? Mm. When you when you I mean when you look at them, I know you have the architectural eye. Yeah. And yeah, very sort of 40s, 50s, brutalist wartime architecture. Yep. Basic serviceable buildings that that satisfied a need. Yes. Yes indeed, yep. they did. Never made for the lap of luxury, these were just simply to satisfy a need. And I'm they've certainly done that. And I'm so pleased we've been able to find a way to get up close and personal with them. Because I mean a lot Almost of within touching distance. Yeah. A lot of people would use a drone for this, and you know me, regular viewers know I will not use drones. And uh, you know, it's it's just so satisfying to be stood right next to them without having to you know give you a special section on them or anything like that you know it's you can actually get right up close and personal to them and see the buildings as they are you know in the flesh and legally as well yeah, of course and yeah. legally as well 
Yeah, of course. So, yeah. yeah. So there we go. Yeah. That, now. that, my friends, is uh, the parish of Marchington. A very, very varied one. Loads to talk about here. Mm. And I do hope you've enjoyed it. Of course, it's, it's almost dark because of, you know, what time of year it is and, you know, how long it took us to do this one. But uh, it was well worth the effort. And I'm so pleased, like I said, that I've managed to get these in this episode. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiots. This has been the parish of Marchington and I'm out. <laughs>